know, um, I don't want to be a stone, and I don't want much admiration for Ezra Pound as a translator, but I have been in prison about a dozen times, usually for things always, in fact, for things which were stupid. They were neither narcotic nor sexual. But in Israel, I actually committed a crime. It was the worst planned crime. It makes way folder look like Aristotle or Ezra Pound. But when I first got to Israel, I'd been through the Arab countries, and I had a magical relationship with that kibbutz. I hated them. They despised me. Uh, they despised me because I'd been through the Middle East and because I liked the Arabs very much. I despised them because they were like Smurfs going out each morning to their little pom um, it was pomegranate farm doing things. And they would go out to breakfast together singing. They would sing Israeli songs. They would go out to the farms. And I couldn't stand it. I was joined a few days later by my friend Lynn, who I traveled with a little bit in Turkey. She was a lesbian from, a nice Jewish lesbian from Chicago. And she and I both hated this place. And we decided after about two weeks we were not only going to leave, but we were going to do what André Gide once called the gratuitous act of crime with no particular reason to it. There was one person who we despised more than the Israelis. He was a New Zealander who loved everything Jewish, learned Hebrew, learned all the songs, knew what he was going to do, and we hated him because he would go out singing with these Smurfs every single morning, and they loved him in Israel. Well, one day, Lynn, my little lady Macbeth, planned out for me the worst crime that anybody was the most imperfect crime anybody could ever imagine, but we did. She said, let's steal his radio. Yes, let's steal his radio. He was listening to the cricket score, whatever that might be. So we decided, we planned it, and everything went according to as it should be until the end. This was what it was going to be. This kibbutz was on the Gaza Strip. And of course, the Israelis said, whenever a dog got sick, it was the Arabs who sent over their dogs to make our dogs sick. That's the way they worked in this way. The kibbutz was about five kilometers down our dirt road, and on the main road, it was going down to Beersheba, down in the south. We decided, and we would do it. One day, they all went off Smurf-like to breakfast, all the people in the cabin, all the Israelis there, and I stayed back, <coughs> I had a bit of a cough, I'll get to you sooner or later, and I took the radio when nobody was looking, because they were all at breakfast, and I trot, 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 over to the entrance of the kibbutz, and there I bury, 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 bury. I buried the radio next to a tree. Perfect crime. No one would ever know what was happening. Well, at lunchtime, they were all there, and a sermon was given. This man who's come all the way from New Zealand for us, who's more Jewish than the, he's not even Jewish, and his people, somebody stole the radio. We think maybe it was Arabs. But we haven't seen any Arabs around here. Who could have stolen this radio? On and on and on they went. This was a terrible thing. And I sat there very sadly. Well, our perfect crime was going to be perfect. I would unbury the radio that night. I would bring it one kilometer down this dirt road, bury it there. Lynn, my lesbian friend, and I would leave the next week. And on our way down, to see Israel, we would unbury the radio, and we would have a radio, and they would be dismayed. Well, that night, everybody went to sleep in the cabin. Oh, snore, snore. Oh, said Harry of the perfect crime. I think I'll take a little walk outside. <laughs> trot, 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 trot. Under a moonless night, there was the tree that was still there, and I start to unbury, and I and then two things happened immediately. A, there was no portable radio. B, the lights went on me immediately, and all the kibbutzniks ran out. How could you do this? How could you? What had happened was, being Israelis, they not only found the radio, someone had seen me going out there, but they hid it. So it, I think it's called entrapment right now. <laughs> and they entrapped me. And here I was, a nice little boy from Yonkers, and I was entrapped. They were running to me. How can you do it? I committed a crime. Granted, the spotlight was on me. They surrounded me. 
one after the other screaming, you couldn't do this, how could you do this? We have helped you so much. You, you, you haven't picked the, uh, the pomegranates as good as you should be and you take the revenge was this way. <laughs> and people said, how did you feel when the spotlight went on me? And if someone had told me this story, I would have thought, he would have felt panicked, he would have felt terrible. And for the first time in my life, and now I understand crime in inner cities in America, I know it like that. My thought was, doctor, I don't care. <laughs> but that, no, but it was a revelation to me. And whenever I see we're going to fight crime, we're going to arrest them, we're going to stop and frisk, I know exactly what the feeling is on this. Fuck them. <laughs> I won't go into the rest of it, because I've got a bit of a uh, extremity here. But they all took me to a room. First thing, did Lynn have an entry with it? Lynn have an entry? You know, it was Lady Macbeth part of it? No, 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 I did this all on my own. You know, that's it. Next thing, they, <laughs> they called the police from Beersheba. This was the most Israeli thing of all. 20 minutes later, he came up there to arrest me, to put me in the police car. As we're going, and you know, I said, pack your goods. I didn't have many goods. Lynn was there. I said, come to see me in a couple of days. I'll be in the prison, no problem. As we're going down the dirt road and on the main road for another 10 kilometers or five kilometers into Beersheba, he said, so you're from New York? I said, yeah. Ah, my, my sister is having a art exhibition in New York. Maybe you know this gallery we got to talk about. Thank you. I will not talk about my three or four days in prison in this wild west town. Lynn came, paid the $50, I got out. And people ask when I tell this story, am I a self-hating Jew? Definitely not. It's the others who I can't stand. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Good job.